Welcome to all departments. The transfer window shut last Monday and the welcome return of Andrew Sermon was the only activity at the court on another rumour-filled deadline day. Miles Addison has returned south for treatment after picking up a knock-on loan at Scunthorpe, whilst Eddie Howe, Jason Tindall, Stephen Purchase and Steve Fletcher rolled back the years to grace the field once again in Andy Culliford's benefit match at Tattenham. From Eddie Howe and Steve Fletcher to John Bond and Ted McDougall, there have been many famous faces at Dean Court over the years. Although very few of us would recognise him in the street, the most famous face in the history of our wonderful club belongs to former striker Dickie Dowsett, whose iconic header has graced the club badge for over 40 years. I spoke to Dickie on the phone recently, where we had a quick chat about his key role in shaping the Cherry's identity. Dickie, welcome to all departments. Thank you. So... You came to the Cherries, first of all, I believe, in the summer of 1957. Yeah. remember how the transfer came about? Because you were at Southampton before that. That's was. right. Well, when I was at Spurs, and the last season I was there, the, the outside right um, was, was injured or got the, he had an operation or something. And um, Arthur Rowe put me in the, the Spurs team to play at West Ham, first game of the season. Play at West, at um, not West Ham, Aston Villa. First game of the season, mm-hmm. and um, he played me at outside right. Well, I won an outside right, but I done all right. I notched the goal when it was two two, made it three two, and we eventually won four two. Anyway, when I went to um, back to Freddie Cox, signed me from Southampton because because Southampton played a couple of games at outside right. And he put me in the outside right, and I and I went into him, and I said, "I'm not an outside right. I'm a striker. You play two up, and and that's the way I play." Anyway, on on from there, he put me in, and I had a good four four and a half years there. Yeah, he scored according to what I've read, 169 games, 67 goals, so not a bad return. Yeah, I think it's a few more than that if you counted um um cup matches. No right. Yeah, because I, I scored when I went to when I went to Crystal Palace. I scored my hundredth goal there. <laughs> when you came to Bournemouth, again I've done a little bit of research, and it said the transfer fee was a hundred pounds. Is that true? I couldn't tell you. No. I wouldn't know. Doesn't well, seem like a lot by today's standards, does it? Oh well, well, it's not not never is, is it? When you look at the wages. I mean, I was wages. I think about fifteen pound plus bonus. At, if we the position where you in the league at Bournemouth, I went to Crystal Palace and they doubled me wage. So that was a London. So that's the difference. Now, what was it like in the dressing room in those days? Was it was it a friendly place? Oh yeah, <laughs> it was a laugh really. <laughs> yeah, good good club, good and ground. You played for us for Bournemouth for. I think about five seasons. and Five, five. I was in my fifth year, yeah. And Arthur Rowe had moved to, who was at Crystal Palace. And 10 years after the day he signed me um, to, for Tottenham, 10 years ago, he signed me at Crystal Palace 10 to, years later. To the day? Almost to the day. or the same, <laughs> the season, 10, 10 seasons, yeah. And by my calculations, you had three managers at Bournemouth in those five years. Is it, am I right in thinking Freddie Cox was the manager when you arrived? Freddie Cox was the manager. Then Don... Bill McGarry. Became the manager. Don, 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 oh, Don Bell. 
Yeah, he's a laugh, that one. Yeah, <laughs> Don Welsh, yeah. Tell us about him. Oh, well, he used to say, play the ball to me, I've got concrete boots. <laughs> 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 he's playing the practice matches, wasn't he? Give me the ball, I've got concrete boots, he used to say. And he was a good player when he was at Charlton. Bill McGarry, isn't that the one? Yep, he was there when you in your last. Yeah, he was there. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. He didn't really fancy me. I don't think somewhere else. Anyway, yeah, I got transferred to Crystal Palace, so that was okay. You had a, a good, a good three years there. You scored good three years there. Scored a few goals. Got promotion. Yeah. Yeah, got promotion to the first division. Yeah. And then you came back south and played for Weymouth for a couple of years. That's correct. Three years at Weymouth. Three years. Was it? Won the league. Second year, we won the league. After that, I think you finished up on the pitch, but you returned to Bournemouth as commercial manager in the summer of 1968. Is that right? Yeah, I think Reg flew in. I think he was manager. Uh, He called me around and said, I want somebody to start doing the the pools, you know, lottery things. So, and you're like, you know, do that. So I thought, I did my job up, what I was doing. I said, yeah, OK. So I, I went in there and I was there for a year. Things were going quite well. These days, obviously, commercialism oh. in football is rampant. Yeah, But it is in those days, it was probably a slightly more... Uh, well, even though your job title was commercial manager, it's probably a slightly, more, a slightly less commercial age. Oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, I was going round into shops and pubs getting night agents. That's how that was. <clears throat> The advertising was all done, you know what I mean? There was no big adverts or extra ones put up or anything like that. So we weren't into that. If we had adverts around the pitch, they were there every year. I, I was on the lotteries all the time. So you weren't involved in anything else behind the scenes, like transfers or anything? No, I didn't have anything like to do with that. I did change the name. Yeah, well, I was coming to that. Yeah, that, I mean, <laughs> you certainly left your stamp on the history yeah. of the club. Because yeah. you, you did a few, or you were certainly involved in a few of the things that happened, starting with the name. That's we were, right. We were Bournemouth, well, we were Boscombe FC originally, then for a long time we were Bournemouth and Boscombe. <laughs> Bournemouth and Boscombe Athletic Football yeah. Club. And then, and then so we I, became AFC Bournemouth, so you were yeah. kind of the key player in that name. That's right. I, I, John Bond was the manager, I think, and, uh, and I went up and we talked, and I said, look, if we put AFC Bournemouth, your name will almost be on the top nearly every time. When they print the the matches, AFC, <laughs> you'll be up the top, won't you? So we, that's what started it, I think. There's always been a bit of a debate amongst the fans what the AFC bit stands for. Can you clear that up? Yeah, Athletic Football Club Bournemouth. That was obviously one of the, the, the suggestions that's been bandied about, the other one being Association Football Club Bournemouth. But as far as you're No, it's Athletic Football, Athletic Football Club Bournemouth because it was Football. Bournemouth and Boscombe Athletic Football Club. So if you put the Athletic Football Club first, did you get much resistance from people around the club or the fans when the name was changed? No, no. I've probably done it in the summer. I don't know yet. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> when no one was around to, to tell you not yeah. to. And were you yeah. also involved in the change to red and black stripes with the kit? No, that was John Bond. Yeah, John Bond, the manager, done that. I think he was a big yeah. fan of AC Milan. Yeah. They had quite a bit of success in Europe during the 60s. Oh, right, yeah. You're probably most famous, despite your um, successful playing career for us, for <laughs> being the image, or allegedly being the image to That's right. on the badge. So were you involved in the design of the badge? No, it's done. Harold Walker was the chairman, and he had a, I think he had a design studio somewhere. And I just went down there, and uh, we, because me and John Bond and myself, we thought that changed in the badge, because we'd altered the name, so I think. And um, they'd done a sketch of that, and they made that the badge. So and you actually modelled for it, did you? Well, I was good in the air when I played. I headed as many goals as a shot, almost, you know. So that's where it came from, yeah. And you must be very proud that that's still the image that's used. I mean, we've got this new, they call it the Evolved Crest now, but it looks very similar. Still got you on it. It must be fantastic to see that everywhere and know that you've left such a such a mark on the history of a football club. Well, that, that just happened, didn't it? That was it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, yeah. So, but I, I did notice, when I, when I, I, they invited me to a match not long ago, or one of the vice presidents did. One of, the, one of the, the girls who were vice president invited me to the match. Mm-hmm. And then, as, and I had lunch with the directors, you know, and um, 
on the plates. It's already on the plates, they see it. Eating off your own food yeah. almost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's only a little one. Do you think it bears much resemblance to you in that era when you were playing? Well, you I didn't have long, long hair. Long I had more hair. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, look at it. It's good to clear that up. So I, I always wondered if it was actually you, and like obviously it was from what you've said, or whether well, that's what it that's what it symbolised. Yeah. yeah, or whether it was because you were in the role of commercial manager at the time. Yeah, well, I was good in the air, wasn't I? I could head the ball, so that's why it's just the head. <laughs> On the back, right, it's the bad, just the head, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You were good. You yeah. were good with your feet as well, though, weren't you? Well, the old one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a that's a massive thing, and that plus the the change of name around that era. You know, those, yeah, those right. things have left a left yeah. a lasting and the, legacy. And the change of the colours, because it used to just be like the Arsenal colours. Mm. So that's cool. why I I enjoy playing there because I was an Arsenal supporter when I was a young boy, wasn't I? And then you went on to play yeah. the Spurs. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, the only game we ever played at Highbury was the South End. Reserves. Yeah, you were there before you came to us, weren't you? Yeah, I went to South End then South End. What do you remember about this? what we call the John Bond era? Because there were some good players around there, Ted McDougall, Phil Bowyer, yeah. and so forth. We, we had yeah. another uh, near brush with promotion, didn't we? You did, you certainly did. Ted McDougall, he scored nine goals in one game. That was in the FA Cup, wasn't it? That against Margate. And I said to people around me, you'll never see that again in this football game. Somebody scored nine goals. Brilliant. Good lad he was. Well, thank you so much. Wanted to talk to you for quite a long time, especially to learn about the badge and the kit and the name change. Those things, I've always wondered exactly what yeah. happened. You've got, like I said, an iconic place in the folklore <laughs> of the club. Bit, yeah. Long may it continue. Thank you very well, much, Dickie. Doing. Okay. Great to hear from Dickie there. I fulfilled a long-held ambition by having him on the show. Don't forget, all previous interviews can be found on the archive page of the podcast website at www.alldepartments.wordpress.com. If you want to get in touch, email alldepartmentspodcast at gmail.com and you can follow on Twitter at alldepartments. That's pretty much it. Won't be long now before our Yorkshire doubleheader against Rotherham and our old friends Leeds United. So up the cherries in all departments and goodbye.